What's going on, Pool Chasers? Thank you so much for joining us today on episode 62 of the Pool Chasers podcast. As always, our mission is to help educate and inspire in the form of a podcast. Our next guest is our good friend Kane Zamora with Premier Pool Care. Premier Pool Care is a pool service and repair company here in Scottsdale, Arizona. We've known Kane for a while now and still remember meeting up with this extremely ambitious young man. At the time, had no idea that the little advice that we would give him, he would take it and run 100 miles an hour with it, but he sure did. Kane has worked really hard to position himself and his company the right way. It wasn't always easy, especially being young in this industry, which Kane will share more of in this episode. We really love that he has taken the initiative to educate himself on larger luxury pools, speak to some of the top builders in town, and build a very cool lifestyle brand that is unlike most. We hope you all enjoy our conversation as much as we did. Now let's get into it. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. I saw someone post on Facebook and they were like, Yo, do you guys want to go in on tabs on Alibaba? I'm like, dude, <laughs> the amount of shipping you have to pay for that is like, I don't even... I think it'd be worth you probably pay more than you know like superiors oh you'd have to buy a container for sure oh yeah oh. <laughs> I'm like, you would know you're the one you bought like pallets and pallets of it i know <laughs> i'm like you guys are you probably save like two dollars and so i don't think it's worth the but i actually don't mind spending more on tabs like if it's a quality tab because we've been playing a lot with the tabs i've seen i know you guys seen that like i think it's worth it to pay you know four dollars more a bucket when i'm using like one less tab per pool yeah um, so i've been playing around with that shoot for two years yeah but you gotta make sure that like the person that's putting the tabs in knows that and understands oh, yeah. that that's, that's <laughs> the other a lot of times they're just like oh yeah fill it up or put five and you're like you yeah. gotta actually understand exactly water chemistry and how many it actually needs and not just a fill a floater exactly otherwise you're you're just yeah. losing money <laughs> exactly <laughs> um that's a little bit easier when you're smaller and you have like yeah. one guy like yeah, um, that's why I test them out, and I won't let them use them until I, like, after like two months, I can either tell if they're better or not. Yeah. Um, Based funny. on the chlorine like, yeah. fluctuation. Yeah. Of the pool. I usually only do it in the summer too, because it's you're not gonna get a a good consensus in the the winter. But it's funny because guys see me do it, and they're like, "Oh, dude, let's go in. Like, I'm done." Like, and then you you're like, "How much?" And then you tell them like. You never hear from him again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make payments. I know. I know. I remember I talking to you about that several years ago, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not. It's I'm not buying that much. Just paying money, dude. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I mean, you save money. Like, yeah. if you do, like I said, if the people putting them in understand it, yeah, how um, to use it correctly. And most companies, if you buy it in October, um, you get a three month payment plan, and it starts in like June, so it'll be like June, July, August. Oh really? And you can buy as much as you want in October. Um, and it's like zero percent. Um, so it works out pretty well. That's not bad. Yeah. So you just save for it. Yeah. During that winter time, and then start paying it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just yeah, save the X amount each month. And yeah. So it's cool and it's nice because like I just have everything at my house. Right. Um, so when I at least for me, it's convenient because <laughs> if I'm out, you know, here we go. So what do you, um, I don't know, besides pool stuff, what are you doing for fun lately? I do a lot of RC cars. So my Oh, my, really? Yeah, my dad has a, like, I mean, it's a professional track in his backyard. And it's the, with their gas-powered eight-scale um, RC cars, you know, they probably, I don't know, 30, 40 miles per hour. Me and him, I mean, we'll run them, every, you know, a couple of times a week, you know, at nighttime because it's hot right now. But once it cools off, I mean, like, sun, usually Sundays we'll have, a, you know, we have a Facebook group, so hey, open practice day, and, you know, fifteen twenty guys come out and oh, that's cool. We'll run on the track, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's actually gotten pretty big. We've had like uh, manufacturers come out like that make RC car parts, and they have like private test days. And um, one of the local kids, he's a world champion, um, and he'll come out. Um, but it, I mean, it's crazy. This kid's like seventeen, eighteen. I mean, he probably makes two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year driving. Oh wow these cars like an endorsements <laughs> and stuff and yeah things. like you know he rolls up and he has his brand new raptor and he has his own house you're like man what? racing rc cars <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and then he travels the world you know he 
they just went to Australia for a big race and, you know, it's paid for and, he, you know, he does good. He gets paid for that, you know, for that. Like his training is like just a bunch of like finger, <laughs> yeah. finger workouts. Like <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I like to mountain bike too. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't done a whole lot lately because it's so in the summer it's miserable. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. I swear to God, somebody would make a killing <clears throat> if they could fund a, I always thought it'd be cool if there was like an indoor, like just dirt mountain here yeah, that, that you could like work. hike on, that you could ride a bike on, that exactly. you could like just, you know, something cool like that. Cause it is like, like Dubai. It is unsafe. <laughs> oh, I know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm getting my kids out of the car. I'm like, hurry, hurry. <laughs> We're going to die. Yeah. Get in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Chad Nickel on Facebook and he's like hiking at like one in that. I'm like, what are you doing? Man? Oh, yeah, dude. He's serious. He's going to go hike Kilimanjaro. Yeah, I saw that. So uh, yeah. he's definitely going to get prepared for that. Well, I used to wait when we first moved out here. I guess I was in better shape. I don't know. But I used to wait for the hottest part of the day. And I live by yeah. um, like Echo Canyon Camelback okay. over there. And I would like hike it. I remember the last time that kind of made me a little nervous was I didn't really know too much about the monsoons yet. Oh, okay. And it was clear as day and I get almost to the top and it just like yeah. all hell breaks loose. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and it's not like there's, <laughs> yeah, you're just screwed pretty yeah. much. So I just, uh, yeah. And it lasted for a minute. So I was like walking down. It was like super freaking windy. Yeah. Hear lightning. Like, yeah, I just need to get the hell off this The only thing, dude, I go through so much water. I got to get the biggest, uh, the biggest backpack when I go mountain biking. And it's just like heavy <laughs> on your back. <laughs> yeah, but you know that's the yeah. worst thing that can happen yeah. is running out of water. Oh, yeah. Because then you're life. like in a panic. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, shit. Like, <laughs> Like, don't play like, so much. Just I know. take it do easy. Do I just stay here and just yeah. accept it? <laughs> what do they say there? Wow, water, waters and cactuses? Yeah, I know. Did I, did I pack a hatchet? Yeah. What, do, what do I do? <laughs> but you That's grew crazy. up here, right? In Phoenix? Yeah. Not yeah. a lot of people grew up here and stay here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I grew up uh, like downtown Phoenix in the ghetto. Um, like, what is it? By the stadiums or what? Like 16th Street and Osborne. Oh yeah, so over there. Yeah, that's right. In the trap. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, probably until I was like two years old, and then we moved to um, two years old. Wait, yeah, did you say yeah. you grew up? <laughs> you grew up in the ghetto till you were two. Yeah, and then uh, I don't think that's growing up there, bro. You were like you were, up, you were like you there. were like baby's kids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, not really grew up, but um, and then we moved to like sixty seventh, um, and the one hundred one right by the. I forget what that church is right there. Um, but yeah, over there. And then when I was four, we lived, uh, moved to like Carefree Highway and I-17. So by Anthem. And ever, that's where my parents have lived ever since. I was say you're still out there, right? Yeah. So what'd you go to, did you go to Pinnacle or where'd you, where'd you go? Uh, for high school, I went to Boulder Creek. Okay. Um, out in Anthem. Oh, is that where Pinnacle's at? Pinnacle? No, Pinnacle's off of by Desert Cave Ridge. Creek. Yeah, over by Desert Ridge. Oh, shit, it's over here. I didn't realize that. That's that's where the quarterback plays at? Yeah. Oh, okay. Spencer, whatever. But yeah, actually freshman year, I went to Notre Dame Prep, though, right over by Iceland. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I switched after. It just was so far. Mm -hmm. And like, I was playing all these sports. So like, you know, you leave early, early in the morning. And then, you know, you go, you know, play and then come home. But like, sometimes... I'd have to stay the night at people's houses because we had like practice the next day at like five. Oh yeah, and we were getting done at like nine. What did you play? So I played football and basketball there, and then I swam not for the the team, but in club swim. That was actually the last year I did football and basketball because I broke my arm the previous year in eighth grade really bad, and then during basketball season. Um, like after practice, um, every day I would get really bad arthritis, like where my arm would lock up and I couldn't move it. So I went back to my doctor and um, they did a, an MRI and they found that the bone wasn't growing anymore, that I had broken and it was shorter. And so they had to stretch the bone out. Um, so they cut it, the bone in half and put two screws on either side. And then over like two months, I had to move it 12 millimeters. And then after that, just my arm was never strong enough to play. Oh, that sucks. Football or basketball. Like, I swam all the way until senior year. Hmm. But, yeah. I pretty much was a multi-sport athlete, you know, growing up. I started out as BMX. Um, I raced BMX 
I don't know how old I was. Probably, I probably started when I was seven or eight to probably 10 or 11. That's the one sport I wish I never, never stopped because I was actually very good at that. I was um, sponsored by like Monster Energy and Charlie Designs. Um, oh, yeah. Towards the end, yeah, we had, I had like a paid for bike. Me and my mom and my sister would just travel all over. It was, it was pretty fun. And then I broke my other arm. And then I was so young, I just was like, I just rode scared after that. And then I kind of just, I lost it. Well, that's what happens when you do something to your ankle, your leg, your yeah. arm. You you start to hesitate because you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Exactly. I had a lot of friends that uh, rode BMX growing up, and it seems like a lot of them are like like bringing it back. Yeah. Like they're in their 30s or something, and oh, they're yeah. back on the track yeah. and trying to get back into it. Um, and I never really saw that with too many other things, but I'm seeing like the BMX come back on my thoughts. It's pretty cool. What yeah. kind of bike did you ride? Um, so I, the company I was sponsored by was Stats, Stats Bikes, uh, S T A A T S. And then before that, I don't even remember. I just remember it was an all carbon fiber bike, and it was funny because at the time my dad had like a little Honda, souped up Honda Civic, and like the bike cost more than his car. <laughs> uh, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, and like, but I used to do uh, like in high school, we would. Uh, we're not high school, like grade school. We would jump like, you know, BMX, more like the big dirt jumps, you know. What bike was it? Uh, Sunday, Sunday bikes. Yeah, I remember. Okay. Yeah, and I had, uh, it was it was badass. It was called the Sunday Fun Day Pro. Um, and they made like, they only had two in all of Arizona when they came out. And I got one and my buddy got the other one. It was like line, or neon orange with neon yellow wheels. And that was a blast. So where did you, where did you swim at here? You swim actually, at the, yeah, um, at the actually at the Jewish Community Center right there in like Sweetwater and Scottsdale. Oh yeah, for shoot six eight years. Yeah, I was a uh, I didn't swim for the Jewish Community Center, but it was called the Swim Neptune, which was a it's a big club team here. I started when I was in third or fourth grade. Um, my mom made me actually. She's like, you're just gonna try this one summer. If you don't like it, you know, cool. But you're gonna try it. You don't have a choice. And then. <laughs> I started and it was I don't remember where it was. It's somewhere off seventeen, like at some community pool. Um and yeah, I just loved it. Um and I was pretty fast. I mean there was just it was like nothing competitive really, but you know, I was winning all the races, so that's when I uh went to swim for a competitive like club team, um, which the first one was an anthem. It was called uh, Anthem Dolphins and then was I was get I grew out of it. So that's when I went to the swim Neptune. And that's kind of where it took off for me. And we would, you know, travel and do all that stuff, do swim. And when I was, I think it was 12 or 13, that's when, that was like my peak um, when I was winning states and all that stuff. When, it's crazy. Once again, the high school, I mean, you could be stupid fast. And then, you know, you race these guys in California and they just, it blow, they blow you out of the water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, when, and when you're, I was a sprinter. So when you're a sprinter, I mean, you could be fast and say you swim a 20, you know, 21 second, 50 freestyle. This next guy is 19 seconds and like 73, you know, 1973. It's just like, it's so minute. Um, it's just, it's hard yeah. to, to qualify on those kind of things. And, you know, like the guys, you know, like states or um, nationals or something, you know, there's 12 guys in the pool and they're all finishing within a second of each other or less than, you know, maybe even half a second. It's just, it's too competitive. It's hard that's how it is now. They're winning by like a hair. Yeah. I mean, yeah, literally. So it was it was fun. That's probably the best shape I've ever been. Probably never get there again. But <laughs> <laughs> swim, swimming but, is insanely and why, I mean, we would literally swim twice a day, you know, in the morning at night. And then after, after night, you go work out in the gym. I mean, it's a it's a big commitment. I need like a harness on myself. Like, dude, pull me up. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to make it back. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually funny because now that I'm in the pool business, uh, one of my buddies, Manny Gordillo, um, he oh, yeah. plumbed the Jewish Community Center. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So it's kind of funny. Like, hey, man, I swam in there. And, you know. Yeah, Manny's a cool dude. He's he good, is, too. He, he is really good. He's a funny dude. Yeah, we've actually made, like, pretty good friends. So, you know, you're you're a pretty young guy to just kind of be making such an imprint in the pool industry. Yeah. Why um, Why did you decide to get into this? It was honestly, were you working for somebody else or? Yeah. So what happened was my mom would swim by, swim at this pool by our house. Uh, and she'd always see the guy, uh, the guy cleaning it. 
and she was like hey you should try to work there like he says you know you could go after school like because it was when i was a senior he's like you you, you you could go after you know you finish your three classes and go clean some pools so i i hit up the company and uh they're like you got to be 18 and i was like 17 at the time i had just turned 17 so i was I was like, okay, you yeah, know, no big deal. And I literally, like six months later, I called and I was like, hey, like, you guys want to reconsider? Like, I'll train for six months, whatever. Um, just do whatever you guys want to do. Like, I want to try this out. Three months later, they finally, they had hired me and I just, you know, was training for three months. And then I graduated and I just kept, I kept cleaning pools. And I was, you know, it was pretty good money. And I was just, I didn't really have an interest ever to go to college. And so I just, I kept doing it. And then I kind of felt like I was getting undervalued for how much work I was putting in. So I ended up switching companies and I worked there for another year. I just started to see like customers getting mad at me, but not for, you know, bad service, but lack of communication and stuff not getting done. And like, it made me look bad. And I, you know, I like, you know, do the best that I can. So I was like, why don't I just start my own thing? Like, I think I think I could do a better job. I think, you know, a lot of guys think that. Um, I started doing stuff on the side. And then that's, I think when I met you, well, I didn't, well, I haven't even met you, but we, uh, I messaged you on Instagram on the brothers. Okay. And I, we were trying to figure out like and how I, that I remember started. exactly what happened is I had, uh, I messaged you cause like, Hey, my buddy is looking to be in the pool business, but I, uh, you know, I can't hire him. I'm too small. Like, are you guys hiring or anything? And then you're like, oh, no, we're not hiring. And then you're like, hey, you want to meet up one of these days? And then I think that's uh, when we met up, you're like, you know, why don't you try to make this company bigger? Because I was still working for the other company. And then I think that's when you offered, you know, like, hey, let's do a photo shoot. Let's, you know, make you a website. Let's, you know, let's get this thing rolling. Yeah. Uh, and now that we're talking about that, I think um, you had similar qualities that I had that I don't think a lot of people in the industry have. And that is um, just kind of into fashion and into yeah. branding. Cause I know at that time you were kind of doing like you were selling Supreme stuff yeah. and different That's things like that. That's actually what really drove one to be a business owner was the, the Supreme doing that in high school. Yeah. Um, and I think in understanding branding and why you like some of these other brands yeah. and wanting to build something around that, especially when you see stuff like Supreme, it doesn't motivate you to want to start a clothing company. No. Because it's so flooded. Exactly. And but it's cool to be a part of something that has never been done before. Exactly. And the pool industry is such a beautiful place because there's a lot of room for growth. Yeah. And there's a lot of room for you to kind of especially in your own business, it's a way for you to make it your yeah. own. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think I ever was like, I wanna do this cool thing it was more i want i know i want to do my own thing and this is what i'm doing right now so let's let's see what we can do with it because i you know i lived at home and i you know there wasn't a lot of pressure you know like we support you and whatever you do so i was like let's just let's give this a run because i really it generally i mean i swam my all my whole life i really do enjoy pools like so like there was there was a passion there so i was like you know let's just let's give it a try yeah. So you actually get it. I, I don't think we ever knew that you swam before. So yeah. I think that's a, a really important element because we've talked about this before that so many of us, you know, do this for a living, but yeah. we actually don't know what it feels like to be on the other oh, end yeah. of it where it's like, what does it feel like to be in the water? What exactly. does that uh, relationship look like? But yeah. if you're swimming, it's like, dude, this is, I'm a professional working on this body of water and yeah. I actually know what it feels like to be exactly. in the water. And I'm actually mortified now looking back on it, swimming all these pools, like, cause now that, you know, I know what's in the water and why I was itching and all of that stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it grosses me out. We actually we used to swim at this one pool down the street right here from Sweetwater and Scottsdale. And like, you'd be swimming and like, you'd get out of, like, you'd finish a lap and there's like hair in between your fingers and like, it was nasty. <laughs> but now that I know what I know, it's just, it grosses me out did you ever feel compelled to like stop by there and donate some time like <laughs> yeah. i just want to help this pull out i know i remember swimming here when i was a kid i know and i remember one time they're like oh yeah the, you know the, i don't even know what they're talking about but i think it was you know if the corner reading isn't high enough we can't swim today because the pool is looking bad and it was like a zero and they're like oh yeah you're fine <laughs> and we just hopped <laughs> oh, in <laughs> it was gross water oh nasty dude <laughs> i think you know we're around all the time now too even 
when we sw- when I swim in other people's pools, you yeah. can just feel the quality of the water. Yeah. And no matter where you are in a hotel or friends pools or whatever I'm swimming, I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. And you can just, you get I, out for like two seconds and you can feel your skin like, yeah. you know, harden almost. It's kind of like, yeah. I honestly hate, <laughs> hate swimming now. I don't even like swimming at my parents' house and they got a pool and I actually just had Steve Ward do the RO trailer on it and, you know, best water you can get. And I just have like no desire to hop in the pool ever. <laughs> Well, sometimes I think you're scared of what you're going to do to the pool. Like, do I, should I go rinse off or something? Like, yeah. am I going to jack this thing up? I know. Um, so I'm curious, you know, you, you've talked about your parents quite a bit and it seems like they're extremely supportive. Yeah. Um, maybe you just give us a little breakdown about your family and what it is that they do and maybe, um, you know, how they've inspired you through this journey. Yeah. So, uh, my mom, she's always been a stay at home mom. Um, and like growing up, she would volunteer at the school and um she was actually a librarian like when I was in eighth grade and then my dad's been in the car business my whole life um selling cars and then around high school he became a a general sales manager and then I don't know probably five six years ago he became a GM so now he runs dealerships and um he's done that He's been at three stores now. Um, He basically goes in on these dealerships for AutoNation and uh, rebuilds them. He gets them, like, to where they need to be, and then they'll throw them in a a new store. Um, And he's actually the one that kind of pushed me to start my own thing Um, because I was working at one of the companies that had a really nice brand-new truck, and he's like, why don't you sell this thing, you know, collect your money because, you know, you got a good deal on it and, like, invest that in doing something on your own. Like, you're you're paying this payment to work for someone else. Like, why not put this money and do your own thing? And so I, I literally that next week I sold the truck, you know, I got the LLC for premier pool care. And, uh, you know, I was like, let's, let's see what we can do. Right. So um, I'm assuming he was pretty good at teaching you some business tactics, yeah. sales and yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. Very, uh, to extent. Cause yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he's a car salesman, wheeler dealer. Like, so yeah, like some of his advice is like, like, oh, I can't, do, you know, I can't. He's like, that. you need to dress up like a hot dog and stand yeah. on the corner. <laughs> yeah, because he's always like, well, how can you sell this? How can you sell that? Like, no, like. Well, what's some of the best advice he's given you, do you think? Um, I would just say, I mean, he's not a big talker, but just his worth at work ethic, just, you know, going in work, you know, every day at seven, get home at seven, like, you know, pretty much six, seven days a week. Just, I think the work work ethic, you know. A lot of consistency. Yeah. And just showing, you know, if you work hard, you know, this is what you can provide for your family. And that was the goal. What does he think about where you're at right now? Or um, does he have any idea? He doesn't say a lot, but I know he's, he's, he's proud. Um, like he just, he doesn't have a, he doesn't do a great job verbalizing that, but I know he is, you know, they get very excited and all, I mean, all my family, they're very supportive and um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I have a sister. Uh, she's she actually just started uh, college last week. Oh, nice. But just it's out to trip. <laughs> at uh, ASU or what? Uh, she's going just to GCC for the first two years, and then she'll go to University. Grand Canyon. Uh, no, oh, uh, community Glendale. college. Yeah, yeah, Glendale. And then she uh, she's doing like forensics or something, and then she'll go to university after that. Forensics. That's yeah. the best way to do it, man. Go to community college, get those gener- oh, yeah. generals done for cheaper. Oh yeah. Yeah. You didn't try to talk her into like wanting to be a chemical engineer or something, nah. something that could help you later on. No, it's <laughs> funny. Cause I've always tried like my mom, she's like a great cook and she like does like interior design and like all these crafts. I'm like, Hey, let's make an Etsy page. Let's do it. And they just like her and my sister, they're just like cool with like working you know, for the man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I do the same thing. I slowly started to shut my mouth because yeah. every time I say that, like, Oh, I was dragging like, some business shit into this. Can we just <laughs> yeah. like, I just like to do it. I'm <laughs> not know. trying to like sell anything. I'm I like, know. oh, okay. That's literally how I am. <laughs> I get an idea and I just, you know, let's run it. Yeah. It's like you're in the store. It's like, oh, I really like this hat. Oh, we should make like a thousand of them. I and know. then we can go. Like, no, dude, I just want, I just want it. I just want the hat. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm the guy that buys it. I know. You're the person that sells it. Hey, I know exactly. I do the same thing. I've made hundreds of hats so far. And it's like, I haven't charged for one hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I want to go back to um thing you said earlier, you know, when you said you were working for that other company and, you know, you feel like a lot of people feel like they can do it better. Yeah. 
did, was that when you started to do it yourself, what was kind of the reality there? Did you feel um, like it was like, okay, now I kind of get what running a business is. And at, at the time I was like, yeah, I can do this better. But now the more I get into it, like I, I kind of get why they push things off and why filters aren't being done or why this customer doesn't have stuff to, like it makes a lot more sense now. I mean, I still think there's improvements that could be made, but I, I, you know, I think I do a great job, but I, I can see why it was like that now that I've, I've been in it. Yeah. Well, I think you're right though, is I think a lot of people are in your shoes or, you know, we, we started it, you know, not working for somebody else, but yeah. a lot of, you know, a lot of the companies in this industry, they'll start working for somebody and then they don't like where they're at or being treated and yeah. they're like, yeah, I can do this better, but there's a big reality wall that you hit there at some point. <laughs> yeah. Like you think, oh man, 40 pools. I can get that in no time. Like, let's just go, let's run it. And it's not, it's not like that. And, um, I mean, even if there's a lack of service, I think for that company, you know, when they're that big, you know, they just, they keep getting them and they keep going and, um, they really do have, they might take a little bit, but they do have good customer service and they do have good, uh, what's the, like, things set in play to keep the co company running smoothly and you know it's not like they're bad it's just you know you think they have all the time in the world to fix your one pool but they got a thousand pools like you know you gotta look at what needs to be done what's actually a priority what's not you know if a motor's down you, a filter clean is probably not top priority you know right. to clean so it, I, I have a lot better understanding you know now yeah well I mean there's always like things that can get better, but you're right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's difficult when you're running a team. I mean, we, we ran a team of 10 and you know, 400 yeah. plus pools. And that is, that is one of big, one of the biggest challenges yeah. is we're how to prioritize these things and yeah. who can get out there when they can get out there. And, you know, there's a big difference that even when you're running 50 pools, there's a big difference than working for somebody exactly. where you get to go home at the end of the day and not care about it exactly. when the owner is, has to go back to that pool that you serviced and fix something and make it work and deal with the customers at night and yeah. deal with their emails and calls and all that stuff. Exactly. It's so much different than, you know, some yeah. people I don't think really realize that. And, you know, so I wanted to see what your thoughts were on that. Yeah. I mean, it happens to me now, you know, Hey, I told you this about last week. Are you going to get this handle? <laughs> you know, I'm trying dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's more critical in our industry than any other industry that, and we always talk about these things, but your company culture, the way things are going inside the business, how much you're paying them, yeah. are you offering the benefits, all those different things. Um, cause this is a physically demanding job. It's really difficult, yeah. especially in Phoenix in the summer. Um, it's very repetitious. You're doing the same thing over and over. So it's, you know, as a business owner, you should be asking yourself if the, um, if you have the right incentives in place. Like if it were you, would you want to work for that company? Yeah, and exactly. I think it's even more important for you that you work for a company because there was probably a lot of times in the beginning stages of your business now yeah. that you kept maybe running into that wall where you were reflecting on the other company where you're like, oh, this is probably why they did this because that that is a little bit easier than kind of going the extra mile yeah. and doing A, B, and C. Exactly. Um, and that's what that's what separates i think the um your average company um from a better company for sure yeah, i agree and i actually you know the first company i worked for it really was kind of a nightmare but i i think it was a very good learning experience to you know for what i'm you know doing now especially when you have somebody working for you exactly. now you, like you do and now you can kind of you remember how it felt, yeah, right? Exactly. So you try I, to do differently. I've, honestly, lately I've been like, man, I, I wish I worked for myself when I was doing this. I, <laughs> I try to make it very easy, you know, for my guy. Um, and I think I do a pretty decent job at it. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't, I don't want to like discourage people from doing it, but there is, you know, we get a lot of people that reach out to us and say, you know, I've been working for this company for 15 years and you know, I, I'm just don't like the way I'm being treated or whatever. I'm going to do my own thing, but oh, yeah. there's just, there's just so much more. You have to be super motivated to, to do your own thing. Like, yeah. cause if you're not, if it's not like a passion of yours to own your own business and to do your own thing, like, it's definitely not easy. It's super difficult a lot of times to go through all that process of building routes and 
you know, dealing with these customers and nonstop hours, you know, I had to work six, seven days a week. Like it's just different it and is. you have to be ready and willing to want to do that. Like it has to be a drive and you have to want to be a business owner. Like if you don't want to be a business owner, you probably should just go find another company that will treat you right. You know exactly. what I mean? Cause there's, you know, I think Gary says all the time, like, you know, working for owning a business is so much different. There's ones and twos at Facebook that make a lot more money than than like business owners and are super happy with making that much money working for somebody. You just have to find the right place and people that will treat you right or whatever. And even, you know, if you feel like you've been working there for 15 years and are not treating you right, like, have you had that conversation with them? Cause a lot of people don't even express yeah. that. They just tell everybody else they're pissed off and getting treated bad. And if you haven't approached the owner and tried to figure that out, that's really the first step you should take is try to figure out, Hey, I don't really like the situation. Give them the opportunity to realize that something's wrong. Because if you don't, then they, they might not even know that you're unhappy. Yeah, exactly. I mean, honestly, now doing it for three years now, I I can see why people don't want to do their own thing. You know, they, it really is, you know, it's honestly never ending. You know, you, you go clean your pools, you get home, you got emails, phone calls, complaints, you know, whether they're warranted or not. Um, like sometimes it's like, man, it might be worth, you know, making X amount a month and just going clean my pools, going home and doing whatever I want. Right. <laughs> uh, me and my buddy were talking the other day too. And it's like, it almost seems like, you know, you either need to be like a, a pole pusher, like one man show or like this really big thing. Cause like, it seems like when you're in the middle, you, there's a lot of like growing pains, you know, like, cause you don't have the luxury, you know, if a guy's sick, you, you know, you got two guys total that, you know, that's a big burden. Yeah. Cause you gotta go, you gotta go clean the pools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is rough. Yeah. That messy middle we could talk about a lot is, is is rough, man. Trying to get from point A to point B is yeah is the hard part. Is it the is. grind. <laughs> That's why it's so critical. I think if anybody listening to this is thinking about starting a pool service company, or at the very early stages, and you think, how do I get more pools? I need a whole bunch of pools because I need to make a whole bunch of money. I really think that you should go back to the drawing board and think about really dialing the company in and thinking really long and hard about what goals exactly. that you really want because we talk about it all the time that if we could go back we would have taken a lot more time to learn the trade learn um, all the different licensing all the different education that's out there building relationships with reps um, having an understanding of what it means to have this many pools and what happens we get a vehicle at this many pool we get an office manager at this many we do this, uh, we have this incentive uh, for insurance at this stage. There's all these different things and you're not really thinking about all of that, but it's a lot more complicated, I think, in this day and age because it's not just, it's not just cleaning pools and doing repairs. There's a whole other side of it. Like most people don't have the luxury of having you know, hiring a marketing team or you know, doing all these other things. So you're having to figure out what the name is going to be, the logo is going to be, how you're going to build a website, you're going to be on uh, Yelp and all these other things to be attractive and get business. There's so many things that don't have anything to do with uh, pool service or repairs, yeah. but it has to be done in order to get some kind of business and, exactly. and get that traction started. And I, I don't think, I think it's a hard realization, you know, you think you're just going to get these pools, go do it, but you know, how are you going to do it? You know, they, like I, I mean, I did it. I went in thinking, oh, this will be easy. You get a pool a month, and then you're like, I got eight pools. What am, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Um. And then, you know, I think patience is a huge thing because even when you get on the Facebooks or the Yelps, and I think a lot of guys go into it, whether it's like an ad or something, you know, I'll put a hundred bucks. You know, if I get two clients, that's cool. That's not really how it works. Yeah. I think you have to have a plan. I think sometimes a lot of people, and we've done this too, is you kind of do things aimlessly because that's what a podcast might tell you or somebody might tell you, but you got to listen more closely and dive into it much deeper because if you don't have a good plan for that, ads are good. You really need to look into who your target marketing and oh, what yeah. your area is and what you're really trying to get out of it. Exactly. Um, there's much more to it, not just putting it out there. That's yeah. not really the way it works. And I, I really do encourage trying it for yourself because I've hired a lot of people in the marketing, SEO, whatever. 
they've all pretty much been fails, but I really do encourage whether you try it yourself or hire, find something because like what works for you might not work for me. And I, I think it's good to find out what actually works, you know, try all avenues if you, you know, if you can. Yeah. And really find Google ads might be, you know, what works for you. But, you know, for someone else, it might be Instagram, it might be Facebook. But I, th- I know I really do encourage, to, you know, try it for yourself. I think a lot of guys are scared to step out there. I mean, it's a big investment for sure, but I think there's a lot to be learned because if you don't know what works for you, then how, you know, how are you going to keep that train rolling? Yeah, definitely. I think it's good. I think at some point you will need to hire a marketing company to probably handle that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. But I think it's really important for you to to get your hands dirty and really understand oh, yeah. like the basics of it so that you don't get hustled. Oh, exactly. Because I know too many companies out there that are charging an insane amount of money oh, for yeah. very little that they're doing. And they're not even necessarily, you know, professionals in our industry. So they yeah. don't know it quite as well, exactly. but you need to understand like SEO basics and yeah. how all those different things work. Yeah. And I think that's the other trick is they're very good at selling themselves. You know, I've done it where, you know, a thousand bucks a month, we'll post on your Facebook every day, your Twitter, you know, and we'll write you a blog post a month. And, you know, it sounds cool. And then, you know, you look at these posts and you're like, man, this, uh, this picture, you know, stock photo, someone swimming in a pool with a little sentence. I don't, that's what that's that going to do for me. You know, right. why am I paying, you know, who's going on Twitter to yeah. <laughs> find a pool? Suit? Like, yeah, it that's sounds what's... cool. But like when you have no knowledge, like you're like, I trust you and, you know, let's do it. And then or my favorite is like they've had all these social media accounts for five years or even longer and they have like no social presence. Yeah. They have like not they don't have a following. They don't have any engagement. <laughs> exactly. Their website is very slow. And it's like, is that really the company that <laughs> I know. that's a premium service? Yeah. Yeah. They they can't I, even take care of their own stuff. I've right. actually noticed that. I'm like, when I go out and look for these companies, it's like your Instagram is horrible. Your website's horrible. Like, why yeah. am I going to hire you? I have more followers than you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I might need to help you actually. Exactly. <laughs> well, our industry is so niche too. Like you're, like you're saying with, with the stock yeah. photo is like yeah. not going to do anything. You have to, you know, and to your point, Greg, if you're going to hire somebody, like if you do it yourself and you learn what kind of works for you and what, what, how the industry works, even if you hire somebody, then you can then tell tell them like more of the direction you want to go in and you know, what kind of things you want to see. And they'll know if they post those stock photos, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not, exactly. <laughs> this and, isn't working and that out. That is the crazy thing. Cause even the word, the service industry is so, so much more different than, you know, landscaping, uh, HVAC. Like it really is like a whole different ball game. Like when it comes to the marketing and the approach. Um, and so I think that's where you kind of get trapped because these companies do stuff for these, those kinds of companies and they do it well. And then when it comes, they get into the pool industry, do it for you. Like most of the time, it seems like it's a flop. Yeah. Well, I think they're, you know, once you do partner up with a marketing company, you got to do your part in providing the best verbiage because they're not going to understand that. Yeah. You have to, because they're looking at in terms of, okay, we need a bunch of backlinks on here so that we build up your Google reputation. (laughs) We're trying to do all these different things. And so you have to do your part being like, yeah. okay, all this stuff that you have, customers are not going to understand. <laughs> you need, we need to like break this down exactly because people are just going to bounce out in two seconds because yeah. it's like a bunch of technical gibberish. Exactly. That, but Google's getting much smarter too. And oh, that's yeah. not flying as easy no. as it, as it once did where it's I know. just, I, well, I know when I first started, I mean, you could have a service page and you have, you know, you want to do Phoenix, Scottsdale, Paradise Valley, blah, blah, blah. And you know, you just write the same page over with, you know, the different locations and, you know, that worked at the time. And then now if you do that, you get, you get digged pretty good. Oh yeah. There's, they've gotten way too smart. Since we've started with pool chasers, we've spoken with a lot of pool builders and designers. Something they have all mentioned is that having realistic detailed 3d renderings to show their clients is a game changer. Something that makes the rendering come to life is including products and accessories that your clients can purchase from you. One manufacturer that makes this particularly easy is Ledge Lounger. By going to ledgeloungers.com slash CAD, you can instantly download a 3D file for any product in their catalog. Everything from their signature chase to their new patio furniture, cabanas, games, is all available to drop into your 3D designs. 
We've seen these renderings pop up on Instagram full of in-pool and outdoor furniture, and you can't help but stop and look. If you want to transform your 3D renderings, whether you use CAD, Pool Studio, SketchUp, or any other platform, you can get the product files you need at ledgeloungers.com slash CAD. That's ledgeloungers.com slash CAD, C-A-D. So let's, um, you know, we know running your own business can be pretty difficult. What were some of the struggles that you really had up until this point? Uh, I think when I started, just because I was so young, I don't know if it was lack of respect, but, you know, like, you know, that whole buddy approach, like, you know, hey, buddy, you know, you know, oh, yeah, you know, you can do that. Or, you know, it's and it's hard. I mean, you guys talk a lot of time, like to get information when you want, you know, if you want to learn. And actually, luckily, I was I was blessed because one of my my best friend, um, he's the one that originally trained me in the industry. And he, you know, knew repairs. So when I started, hey, man, I got a shaft seal, like you want to go do it, you know, tell me what you want. And, you know, I'll pay you that. But I want to learn, you know, I don't I didn't care to not make money, but I wanted to learn. I don't think if I didn't have him, I, I, you know, I think it would have been, I'd be in a lot different spot because it really is, it's hard to get valuable information and people are willing to help. I think now it's actually a little bit easier, but a couple of years ago, I feel like it was, everyone just thought it was this, you know, competition. Like, no, I can't, I can't help you because you're, you're going to take this away from me. Yeah. I still get a big sense of that, that yeah. people, want to hold on to that information because they feel like if they put it out there yeah. that they're going to lose their edge, which things change so fast now that oh, as yeah. fast as you tell somebody, yeah. it'll quickly change. Yeah. So. And I mean, you help me get, you guys help me out a ton. I mean, you got, you know, you help me with the service agreement, the auto bill, you know, help me put in, these things into play and you, know, you didn't have to do that, but um, you know, it really did help me out and help kind of be, uh, get somewhere like established. Yeah. And hopefully that just kind of put you on the right track. It might not have been the end all, yeah. but it was like, okay, like I'm going to switch it up. But now I know that I do need to have this sort of structure and I need yeah. to have all these things. I just need to make it my own, tighten it up, do all these different things with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think the other struggle is like, like a time thing, you know, where you know, you're doing this, doing that, and then you, you like, you know, you need to do like the office stuff, and but you want to put it off. You know, you get home, you're tired, you're hot, and so I think that's another. So, what did you do to overcome that? Stop being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, stop paying my bills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't do that one. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think from a business standpoint, one of the hardest things. I think it's still an issue. It's just getting paid on time. I mean, I have the auto bill. I have all that stuff now, and it's still a struggle. You know, we'll go on QuickBooks, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars overdue, you know, 30, 40, 40 days. Um, so, you know, that, that's that been a struggle. Yeah, that's one of the hardest, man. I had to stay on top of that like crazy, and I know if, if you don't have somebody doing it, yeah, it can, it can catch you really quick. It can, and now I mean, that I have a guy, it's, you know, like, if I got to knock on a door, I got to knock on a door, but you know, I got bills to pay and people to pay and yeah, easily, you know, you just got to be more firm with it and not care at some point, you know, you got to be like, Oh, this is the cutoff date. And exactly. you know, I'm sorry you have four kids and yeah, you don't want to pay what I want to pay on time, but this is a business and you know, we have to, that was hard, you know, especially with some of our older customers that we had for a long time. And I think that's a lot of the, yeah. a lot of times the ones that are still it is. <clears throat> behind is like the ones that you've been with for a long time it and is. you don't want to tell them like you want to get rid of them. Like yeah. those are the hardest ones for sure. I mean, when we sold the, the pools, you know, I, I thought we had like only probably 10 that were under a hundred bucks, but there yeah. was like 40. Yeah. But I didn't realize that because I just kind of, those are the older customers that we just kind of let go and kind of hang out. So it was like, you know, it's a lot of times that, but you just have to realize it at some point and realize you provide a great service and you're doing a good thing and you're much better than you were when you started with that person. Yeah. So they should realize that and step up to that game. But you know, you just, those are always the hardest ones, but you have to establish that and keep on top of it. Or, you know, that's money that you should be having for your business and being able to buy tabs or exactly. being able to pay guys better, pay for insurance. Like all yeah. that stuff is racks up. And that's what I've been trying to implement. You know, like 
I don't need that. I, you know, I don't need you, you know, kind of, you need me. And if you don't want me, then that's okay. You know, I'm going to get, you know, the customer I want. And I think that's why. In a much nicer way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, well, I think it all goes back to the initial <laughs> bid. That is like where that relationship starts. I mean, they've, oh, yeah. ar- they've already found you on the website and all these different things. But when you're there at that initial bid, give yourself enough time to be there and not in your head be anywhere else. Make sure that the customer understands that you are a professional company exactly. like any other professional company and that your time, your team's time is very valuable oh, yeah. and things cost money and it's unacceptable and it's going to be in the service agreement and you do it in a in a nice way but you do it as if any other professional were to be in your backyard that's been around for 20 30 years exactly. and how they would approach that because they they don't put up with that you think <laughs> some of these big you know plumbing companies hvac companies they don't they don't put up with that for a second no not at all you know and i i actually i every i don't know maybe 6 8 12 months, I also not a new service agreement. I am always thinking of new stuff to add to it that's going to benefit me. Uh, I think I've gotten to a point where like, if you're signing this service agreement, you're, you should be a kick-ass customer for me. Um, yeah. But we're always, I mean, we're always fighting that. That's why it's so good to, we're always fighting that stigma of like old pool guy and old mentality and these one polar guys that aren't charging enough money. You know, it's, that's why it's good to share the knowledge and make oh, these yeah, other people exactly. better because when you're making them better and you know, you're like, you said, your buddy helped you learn how to do shaft sales and all this stuff. Like he taught you how to, and we helped teach yeah. you how to be a better business and raise that bar so that, you know, we're competing with companies that are doing things similarly. And then, then it becomes a challenge of us doing it better than you, but at least yeah. like, or we, you know, then the marketing changes or different things change to make that but at least you you're competing with people on the same level where it's like that's the hardest part about the customer oh, yeah. is they always think oh well my old guy charged me 90 bucks but then why exactly. why did you get rid of your old guy and i think part of <laughs> thing for us is like to realize we're not a charity you know we you know, we're charging 100 bucks that doesn't mean you get a free float or a free basket free o rings like you need to charge for that it's hard because they expect that stuff for free you know oh it's 5 10 bucks you know well, when I'm doing that, you know, twice a month or, you know, for a hundred people, you know, there's $2,000, you know, that I'm not making that really, you guys should be paying for it. You know, we're doing this set of services and that's not included. And, you know, you, you don't get that for free. You know, you need to pay for it. Right. And I think that is really hard because it does seem like the consumer, there's like expectation that they're going to get a bargain out of when it's anything pool wise. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and it's because all of those stop you in your tracks. You're yeah. trying to, you know that you have a job to get done in a day and you're trying to just keep yeah. going, keep going house after house, repair after repair, exactly. whatever it is that you're doing. And if it's to stop for a minute and add it in the software that I added, you know, this phosphate remover, or I added a floater, or I added, you know, this, that it's like, dude, just throw it in there. We need it. We need to freaking get going. It's hot as shit outside, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? If you can't do that, at least set some new goals where it's like, I really need to get an office manager exactly. that I can, you know, I can let her, or him know that this is what I added. This is what needs to be done. This one needs to be added to the bill. Like start putting together, you know, goals. It's like, because if you can't do it, like some people, like you just might not be able to do it. It's, it is a lot. Oh yeah. On and top I, of your day-to-day job. It is. And that's why I like with the chemicals, you know, I don't want to keep track of, you know, things not including the basic chemicals. It really is a lot of work, you know, pound by pound, ounce by ounce. So now I do a summer chemical fee, you know, some pools I might lose a little bit, but majority of the pools, like the smaller ones, you know, they make up for it and it kind of makes my life a whole lot easier. Um, You know, having that, you know, in March, you're going to pay X amount, your chemicals are covered. And I think when you set something up like that, then you're kind of taking off the legwork, you know, you don't have to figure out how much this is, how much that is. Um, and then the other thing we've done is, you know, anything under $25, you know, if you're signing a certain service agreement, you we're charging this to your card or you're being billed for it and you signing this, you're agreeing to it. And it's not like we're trying to scheme on you, but you know, we want the pool to work the best it can. And I'm not going to wait for you to order a floater on Amazon for $9. Yeah, exactly. For sure. <laughs> and that's really smart of you. That way you can just kind of make the adjustment there on the spot, especially exactly. if it's items that you keep on your truck Yeah, that you can just do right away instead of 
waiting another week. And you don't really want the customer to do that either because they somehow always find like exactly. the one. <laughs> the crappiest floater yeah. that doesn't unscrew or like the, <laughs> yeah. the turtles or I the know. No weird, animals. I know. Stupid animal. <laughs> no sharks, no ducks. I swear, dude, those long ones with the animals on top, the chlorine does not dissolve in those things. It doesn't matter how much tabs you put in that thing, it's full. <laughs> that thing is like, a, like stabbing your own holes in the bottom I at like one point. You're like, it's, this is not big enough. <laughs> exactly. Dude, and they get hard to turn too. I mean, it's like uh -huh. a like a jelly jar that I won't know. open. You like kind of pound the you, side of it. You're trying to thread it back on. You're like, Okay, I spun this thing eight times. It is not catching. <laughs> that is too funny. But I mean, even with my guy, you know, I've even set up like an incentive. So, you know, stuff is getting done and it. Like with, whether, you know, say the pump's not priming and you need a new O-ring, you know, throw the O-ring on pumps, primes up, you know, it saves me time. But also the pool isn't really down and it's working correctly or like a Jandy valve O-ring or backwash piston. Even though it's cost me a little bit of money instead. Of, but like, I think you need to realize your time, like, you know, say you charge $100 an hour, like, you know, if it's saving me an hour and I'm paying this guy $10 to put this O-ring, you know, I save myself $90, even though I'm paying for this, you know, I think you need, that's the hard thing is kind of value time and money. Like, are you going to save money if you go, you know, do this or, or is it really going to, in the long term, going to help you out? Right. Incentives really helped, I think, at, you know, us at one point to have them actually recording exactly. when things are getting put in and helping us charge for that. I don't know if everything got reported, yeah. but it was definitely like 75 to 80% better than it was before. Oh, yeah. I think there really needs to be the incentive because they're not going to do it. Right. But it should be, that's the approach that should be talked to the customers. You know, and that's what we always try to do with the service agreement was explaining to them that we don't want the pool to be down. Exactly. Like, do you want your pool to be down for two days in the yeah. summertime? No. Like, that's the whole point of having a pool service is for us to change these things when they need to be exactly. changed, and then you'll get billed for them. Exactly. And that's the approach that we always tried to take with them was like, look, this is what we're doing for you. That's why you hire a service. Yeah. Like, you're not, you're going to save a dollar and 50 on Amazon? Yeah, probably. But you're going to wait a day or two yeah. to get that o-ring and your pool's going to be shut down that pool can go green quick in yeah. arizona or say it you know it's a jandy you know jandy o-ring or a pump lid o-ring and you know it's not priming all the way you know and then they don't want your guy to do it that day they want to wait for you and say he forgets to shut it down or something and then you know the threaded nipple on the front of the pump needs to be replumbed or you know yeah, or you're burning a shaft seal or yeah you burn you know yeah there's a lot of stuff that can happen heats up and exactly. it's way more becomes way more expensive than a ten dollar set of o-rings but you know back to the pool service bid it's nice when all those issues are happening when you get there oh, they yeah. didn't call you for repairs yeah but that is like your time to shine exactly because it's like yeah the pump always does that it never really kind of gets a full prime i don't get the suction i'm looking for da, 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 da. and you're like well here you know you take the pump lid off yeah. and maybe you just need to flip the o-ring clean it off lube it up and you know you're checking the lids like sometimes there's a hairline crack in the lid sometimes yeah. it needs a new o-ring which this does because it is flat and crack has never been replaced exactly and you're going through all that with them and they're like and then you're showing them you know maybe you clear the impeller because there's a bunch of debris that's caught up in there mm -hmm. And you're showing them that you're a professional and you know what exactly. you're doing. And there's just a ton of other things yeah. that you can do that they're like, you know what? This is why. And it happened every time. Like this oh, is yeah. this is why I called you out here to take care of this. Exactly. You know what I mean? And you're and, you know you're building the trust right there. Exactly. Uh, and when you go do that bid, is the time to do it. You don't ever you, get that opportunity yeah. ever again. That's you know why what? I'm saying yeah, that. Exactly. You don't get to, hey, can you meet me out there? Like, you know, you're two months yeah. into the relationship. Hey, meet me out there. I want to do this again. I want, yeah. I want to show you what I can do. You, <laughs> exactly. Two months later, it, it's exactly. gone, dude. And like, you know, you're there. And if you have a team, you know, your guy might be cleaning it that next week. He might not notice what you notice because, you know, you're the one doing the repairs. You're the boss, you know. And uh, and I honestly think it looks better when you do it there than, you know, you sign them up the first week you charge them service and you're like, oh, here, you need $800 in repairs. I think it looks better if you kind of do everything at the time of the bid, you know. Obviously, you're not going to notice everything right then and there, but I think if you can do it there, it looks it looks very professional. But you get to discuss the also the consequences yeah. of, it's like, hey, you have a leak here, leak here, leak here. Here are the consequences. You're exactly. losing water. You're going to have uh, the water chemistry is not going to be balanced correctly because you're 
losing water and you're wondering why chlorine is dropping off, the consequences of not having a working uh, pressure gauge on top of the filter. You don't know what the pressure is. Yeah. Shit, you could be over here and it's at 40 plus PSI and this thing can blow up. (laughs) Yeah. You You know what I mean? A clogged caretaker screen, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But, But there's all those different things that like they just don't know and they shouldn't know you're a professional you should know oh, yeah. but you should be there to break it down for them the best way they can understand yeah. and the consequences are huge cuz every single time was in those backyards they've had you know one two three four different pool companies that, like dude nobody has ever told me exactly. that before and i really do encourage like doing the kind of pool school you know even if it's more involved you know charge for your time but I think they have a better understanding of their pool. They're going to be more willing to spend the money with you. Oh, like, definitely. So I think when you do that bid and you really educate them on what they have and what how their system works, it's going to benefit you a long time when you, you need to get stuff done. Yeah. That's all it is, is for them to understand. Just like um, on your website, you know, you have a good blog. Yeah. And really what that's set up to do is to have people understand these things the best way that they can. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to try and do it themselves. Exactly. It's just when you tell them that they need to do something, they have a better understanding of what you're talking about. It doesn't mean that they can do it. Yeah. It just means that it's not snake oil. It's yeah. not, you're just like, oh yeah, you, you, you need this. It's like, do I really? Yeah. But you can go out there and be like, you do because of this. And this is what you got going on here. And I told you that when this happens, if you're doing a bid the way you should, you should be proactive and like, hey, this doesn't have to be done now, but I'm going to tell you that you're looking at, you know, six months to a year, this is going to go out or this is going to happen and we're going to stay on top of it. Exactly. And um, I mean, it wasn't a uh like a bid, but you know, I had a customer the other day, you know, shaft seal, but the motor's super old. Like, Hey, you know, you can spend X amount now, but you know, if you do a motor, you get this warranty, you know, two year warranty with it. You're not spending, you know, the shaft seal now. And then when I know your motor is going to go out, you know, in the next six months, you're spending, you know, X amount again, you know, and another shaft seal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think if yeah. you really show them that you mean business and you're, you want the best for them, you're not trying to make a, a dollar, a quick dollar. It really, it sets the tone and there's a, a good sense of trust between you guys. And, you know, it really does make your life easier when you need stuff fixed or, you know, or, you know, if there's a storm, you know, they have a good understanding like, hey, my pool not might not look good after this service. When if I want to pay, you know, X amount for an extra storm cleanup or, you know, I'll do that. But, you know, I understand that everyone's pool looks like this after a monsoon. Maybe, not, you know, it's going to take a couple of weeks to come back. Yeah. And I think it's definitely like an art for an individual to figure out how to talk with a customer about, hey, there are certain standards that a pool needs in order to operate um, efficiently because they're kind of, they have really old equipment and there's not very much suction. It's like, well, just, you know, just do it. We'll we'll replace it down the road. And it's like, well, listen, I don't want to say this nicely, but my guy is not going to spend an hour and a half here every week because you don't want to replace the pump yeah. or you don't want to get a, a larger filter. That, like you have a 20,000 gallon pool. We can't have a single cartridge filter <laughs> like on yeah. your pool. That's really hard too. like to say it in a way that's not like rude, you know, like sometimes, hey, you're paying for pretty much an hour and a month, you know, you get 15 minutes a week. Um we're not timing you, but you know, if it's less, it's, you know. Well, they get it when you start doing the math. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. So the average time at a pool is this much, and this is what you get charged. So my guy's going to be here five times as long. Yeah. So let's do some simple math. Let's do that number times that number and let's see what we get. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking what? at 275. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's what you're I looking at for your 20,000 <laughs> gallon pool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing that either. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I've done that too. But Chase. then you figure out that they're, they're not a good fit. They're yeah. like, I'm not doing either one of those. Like, all right, well, I appreciate your time. Yeah. I think, you know, we're not a good fit for each other, but yeah, that's Johnny okay. Truck. But that's okay. Right. Exactly. You don't want to work with them. No. Dude, shit. They're just going to waste your time and your money and your guys are going to get pissed and quit. <laughs> yeah. That's all bad. Yeah. Uh, and, um, I've even done that with new pools of trees. Like, Hey, this is going to be twice a week. You're going to be at, you know, $300 a month, you know, but if you cut these two trees down, I know it's a big investment, you know, you're looking at 120 bucks a month for once a week, you know, long, you know, you're, you're going to enjoy your pool, you know, usually those twice a week pools, you, 
you're not going to enjoy them even going that much. So right. Has that gotten easier for you? Did yeah. you do you remember a time when it was oh, really yeah. like you know what you wanted to say, but yeah. it's like dude, just kind of like <laughs> so getting awkward. the courage to oh, heck yeah, you throw know, that number out the pool, there. Like man, this cleaner sucks ass, you know. <laughs> but you know, I'll just clean the pool, or, you know, whatever. And you know, like I, you just deal with it, you know. That's been the I guess the real craft is learning that you don't need a shitty pool. You, you really don't, you know, mm -hmm. um, establish yourself like, you know, with the service agreement and like build a quality route. Cause when you want to, if you want to build a team, well, if you don't want to clean this pool, why are you picking it up? Like, why would someone else make it less money want to do that for you? That's the hardest thing for people to understand is exactly. like that you don't need that pool. That's the hardest. No matter any conversation we have all the time, it's always like, well, Oh yeah, but if I lose this pool, then I'm like, well, you get another one. Exactly. That's way better. But they're not paying you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what don't you so understand? What you're, doing, you're doing work for free. <laughs> exactly. They're not paying you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't paid you in six months. <laughs> <laughs> You've been showing up there for two hours a week for nothing. Exactly. Or you're going out there every freaking week to to you know scoop one little leaf out that that your guy forgot or the wind blew in after your guy left like those people aren't worth it man you don't know what's going on with stranger things because you're out there yeah. working on a pool that you don't they're not even paying you for That's be real with me is that your grandma's pool <laughs> i was rough when i was working for that first company man it was 40 60 i one time they sent me on this new pool um huge pool i was there for six hours Oh, six hours. <laughs> yeah. It was literally like borderline 200,000 gallons and I knew nothing about pools and it was so effed. <laughs> and I, they literally were like, send this new guy, you know, six hours, you know, and they haven't even done the bid yet, you know, I'm like, okay, like what, um, what do I do? <laughs> but, you know, it's crazy. And then that's crazy. Like I just kept cleaning it, you know, it'd take two, two hours, you know, every time I clean it that for 20 bucks and I'm like, I don't want, you know, when I have my own company, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what were, uh, you have a couple other ones here listed, like, you know, as far as uh, struggles in the beginning, one was becoming more professional to the consumer. You know, is that kind of like what we've been talking about a little bit? Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, I don't know if this is for everyone, but just because I was still young um, and I don't think, I don't know if people really meant it in a bad way, but just like always being called buddy and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I didn't have the nicest truck and stuff. And I started, you know, getting the uniforms, the screen printed shirts, the truck. And I mean, I even grew out my beard, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> that I, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. And I, um, I don't really get told like that's too much or, you know, no, we'll pass, you know, now that I've, you know, I got the wrap truck, I got all these things. It, it really does. You stand out, and I feel like you kind of build a trust even before this discussion's had. Like, because, you know, when I feel like they're calling you for a, re a specific reason, um, you know, they're not calling, like, calling you because they, you know, saw you on Google or something. Um, I just think when you look, look the part, people want to kind of be involved in that. You know, that looks. That is everything. Yeah. And it's it's really fundamental stuff. It is. If you went to a yard sale, would you think things are cheap there? <laughs> yeah. You yes. would, right? Yeah. Yes. If you went into Fashion Square, you went into Nike, you went into Lululemon or something. Yeah. Do you go in there and think that those things are going to be just as cheap as they are at the yard sale? Hell no. No. <laughs> no. Like that is how it is. You show up in a shitty pickup truck. Your chems are all over the place. Your lids aren't on. Your hoses are Trash falls hanging out. off the side of it. You, yeah. your windows are dirty, and your shirt's ripped. You got, you know, bleach, bleach stained ripped shorts. shorts. <laughs> you're, you have two different socks on. Yeah, like, and you're like, didn't accept my bid. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, no, dude. Like, you look like crap. Exactly. Like, and I know it's really difficult because people have never necessarily maybe owned a, a home with a pool and had to rec and wanted somebody to come out for service. But, you know, you know, Kane, you're here in Scottsdale. Yeah. Like you just can't do that here. Right, no. No. Like you can't, you got to look the part. If you want the pools that you're trying to get with the people that are going to pay on time and sign the service agreement and do everything that you tell them to do. Um, and they see the pool as an investment and they want to invest as you as well. 
you gotta, you have to do all of those things. Exactly. And if you don't look the part, they're going to take advantage of that. And that's going to be one of your worst customers. Most definitely. Sure. Most definitely. They're going to, they're going to treat you much differently. You know, I think from, even from like a non business owner perspective, I mean, we haven't really talked about this much. I don't think is like, if you work for somebody and you dress right well, and you talk to the customers well, you communicate with the office well, like all of that is better for you. Like you're going to get, your customers are going to treat you well. You're going to get better tips at Christmas time or whatever. You're going to get better compliments. They're going to call the office to compliment you because you're going to be different than some other guy that's cleaned their pool before, even if you don't own the company. And that's, that's a good point to talk about because, you know, if you're keeping, even if you're driving a company truck, if you're not keeping it clean and you're not taking care of it, you look like trash, even though the company truck looks nice. Like you're going to be the one that they, you get, you're going to get complaints just because of the way you look hundred exactly. percent guarantee Like yeah. this guy looks like a bum out there cleaning my pool. Like I don't want this guy anymore. Like we've had that call a couple times where it was like one of our best guys, but it was like, he's out here smoking, he's cussing, he's throwing this yeah. and that. And it's like, dude, and they it don't ain't want cigarettes. You. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Never, <laughs> never had that one happen. I think the shirts too, like willing to invest in some nice shirts. I, yeah, I think when you have a white cotton shirt that looks like shit, that's not professional. Right. Yeah. But even if you're not the owner, man, I think that's a good point just because you will get way better compliments. Your boss will like you so much more. The customers will like you so much more. You get treated so much better. It's just dude. If there's any thing. you know technicians working for somebody listening to this, you have no idea how hard it is to to come across somebody that um, has that mindset where you show up, you look the part, you talk well with customers, you talk well with the team, the owner, and every like. If you do all those things, like you might get. <laughs> Who knows what you'll get? Maybe exactly. you might be the owner's right hand man one day. Yeah. Like that's just really because it's really hard to come by people that can do every single one of those. Cause we always we always laugh because we'd find people that were, man, because there's five things you need, and they always had <laughs> three or four three or four of those. <laughs> yeah. But then there's that one thing, it's just like, oh, yep, there it is. And Damn. everyone's different with everybody. Yeah. It's always something else. <laughs> and yeah. I think the other thing, like, you know, when you're talking about being professional and stuff, um, is looking at the micro and the macro. I think when you do it that way, like with the truck and stuff, um, if you're spending your money there instead of like a Google AdWords, you're playing more of the long game. And I, I think it's hard. A lot of guys think they do all that stuff and then they're not getting six, 10 pulls a week and then it's disheartening. But like you're building something that long term is going to be sustainable. And that's, I think, more valuable than putting you in know, your quick buck. Yeah. You know, getting Google ads and getting these shit leads that wants to pay $65 for pool service. Yeah. So I think each one of the things that you do complements the other very well. So somebody might find you on your website or your Yelp and then it's like, okay, th yeah. like you pass that part of the test exactly. and it's like you come out and you've got, you know, a beautiful wrapped work truck or pickup truck. Um, and then it's your dress professionally got the logo. It's really cool and edgy and all yeah. these different things. So it's like you're doing each one of those and then you're very knowledgeable about what you're talking about. And we've heard you talk before in the groups and in person. And it's when you're doing all of that, when it comes to talking about numbers and it's going to be, you know, this much, yeah, it's a little bit of a premium, but as you can see, yeah. I'm pretty, you know, badass. I don't know. I don't know yeah. if you've heard about me, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of uh, leather bound books. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so when you do all those things, it makes it so much easier for them to, and it's all perception. They oh, yeah. see, they see the website, they see all that. They don't think, Oh, this guy looks cheap. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's the way I think when I see oh, something, yeah. I'm like, like, yeah, that, that's gonna, yeah. that's and, gonna cost me. And I think too, the other thing is when people are reaching out to me, um, you know, however they're finding me when I go into it, they, they know they're going to be paying a premium, you know, and they're, they're okay with that. I picked up pools, you know, they're paying $90 the last guy you know now they're paying 130 bucks and they're completely okay with that you should change the name of your business to to premium pool care. yeah premium. <laughs> that's been the hard thing is i really like you know the name and there's just so many different premier variables and it's like but i, I can't change it at this point 
and I really do like the name, but yeah, unfortunately you can't. Yeah, nope. <laughs> it's all good. It's maybe some of them came about because yeah. of you. Yeah, I'm like, let's just build this thing so big that I, you know, <laughs> yeah. When you think of it, <laughs> that's funny. You said in some of the questions about raising standards, business to business. Yeah, I think uh, I'm sure you guys have seen in the groups. You know, there's a huge, I don't know, complaint. You know, people not valuing us, and you know. People wanting to pay, you know, eighty dollars a month, blah blah, you know, blah blah blah. But if you don't look the part, you're not gonna get that high tier account. And I think the more of us that look the part and have these set of guidelines, there's gonna be less guys that are gonna be cheap and they're not gonna be able to find it. So you know, there there's gonna be less people questioning. You know, the more people that do this, kind of like what we're doing, you know, I think you're you're gonna up the street cred and the, you know the pool industry people aren't gonna look at you like. You're kind of, you know, scum. Yeah. Whether it's plumbing or it, I don't see a lot of people those price shopping. You know, they they ha- have you, you know, hire you, you come out, you get the job done, and they're willing to pay pay to play. And it doesn't have to be expensive either. Like you're, yeah. we're talking about wrap trucks and uniforms yeah. and all this, but like there's a place to start. Like exactly. you know, keep your your truck washed every week, organize your chemicals, make sure there's not trash falling out, wear decent looking clothes, look professional, buy it hat whatever that looks more professional oh, yeah. like there's there's like cheap a cheaper way to do it oh, yeah. and you're still making yourself look better than some ghetto yeah. pool guy yeah, yeah. You, know? you, don't you don't have, have to, to spend thousand dollars on a wrap you know yeah you something do, you work you towards spend a couple hundred bucks and get a back sticker window or a tailgate you know but you're you're showing like i think if you're showing effort but, but those are all towards but, that yeah, but those sure. are all goals yeah you know what i mean like those for now i can afford to wash my truck every week and yeah. organize everything do each one of those Talked about it before. I've gotten pools from people walking by and saying, that is the cleanest truck I've ever seen. Like yeah. an, like an older lady walking her dog in like an, a, ver- a very exclusive neighborhood. Like that is that is huge. Yeah. And I, I took a lot of pride in that. And that yeah, made me driving. feel really good where it's like, see, like should be doing stuff like this. Like should be keeping your stuff clean and organized and, and doing all those things. Yeah. You were driving a 98 Dodge pickup. Like, yeah. That's, sure. that's what I mean. Like you don't have What's to, your excuse? you don't have to be this brand new truck wrapped and stuff. And that's no. obviously awesome for you and, a, and an ultimate goal for a lot of people. But yeah, start, start with the simple things, make yeah. yourself look better, shave your nappy beard, cut your hair, <laughs> do, you know, exactly. do things that make, just make you look a little bit yeah. better than the other people. And I definitely, I mean, blessed because my dad is in the car business. My yeah. truck looks Everybody, great, but it was, yeah. you know, it's not a brand new truck. Everybody has it. some people they know yeah. different, get a little bit, step up some here or there, but yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, you've had, you took it, but you took advantage of what the opportunities were given to you. And that's, that's exactly. awesome. Like, some people don't even do that. Yeah. I so, mean, we literally just switched our shirts too, <laughs> to, we started doing the Columbia fishing ones, and man, I can't tell you how many compliments we get over the shirt. It's, but you know, even though it's not getting us customers, you know, it, it's like you're just retaining them, though. Yeah, but it is. And I think in the in the long run, you're talking about micro macro. Yeah, I think all those things you're doing are. So say you paid thousands to have you know trucks wrapped and all these different things, that might not be paying for itself right now, or maybe even in the next six months. Yeah, but the you know, the macro, the long-term game is that people are going to remember you. Exactly. So the customer thinks about that, like, man, my pool guy, such a cool dude, cool shirts, does a good job. And it's like all the friends are over and they're like, man, who's taking care of your pool? But but, dude, you got to, there's going to be more, are going to be more sort of passionate to like run and find your information to give to them. Like, dude, super cool. I don't know if they're going to say he wears cool shirts, so no. that's why you're going. That's <laughs> yeah, why you're no. going to want to use them. <laughs> yeah. But you're going to make such a good impression on them that they're going to want to, like. Yeah. Kind of, I think everybody does that. I think when you find a company and anything that you do that you're sort of proud of because they just do something for you, whether yeah. it's you know cool brand logo, providing good service, do something really well for people. They're going to be. Um, sort of an advocate for, for your company oh, yeah. and they're going to want to tell the whole world about it. Exactly. And that's the best person that you can have because oh, yeah. everybody like nobody's paying a customer to kind of be an influencer for your, no. your company, you know? And I, uh, a lot of people are like, man, why do you give out these shirts? Why do you give out these hats? Why do you do all this stuff? But you know, when you go out, you know, and you're seeing your hats all the, everywhere, your shirts, you know, on Facebook and you know, it's, you know, it is a macro thing, you know, it might be five, 10 years, but you're kind of, you know, 
you're bringing up different topics topics of discussion you know where'd you get the hat you know where'd you get the shirt that's cool you know and like at some point you know they might know someone that knows needs a pool or you know you know it's not none of this is gonna be you know right away and i think it's that, brand recognition yeah also. you know like when you're going to buy running shoes you know you're gonna think nike and it's because you see you know the swoosh all the time you know you might you might have seen a swoosh on a short, you know, two years ago when you're getting shoes, you know, today. But, you know, most it all, definitely it all plays a part. So one of the coolest things I ever saw, and I never forget this, was my wife was having a yard sale at her mom's house in in California. And somebody came up and there was like an old brother's pool service T-shirt really? in the mix. <laughs> Dude grabbed it, paid for it right in front of them. She's like videoing this. She's like, did you? Check this. You won't believe this. The dude takes his shirt off really? and puts on the brother's shirt. That's awesome. And he's like, dude, I just freaking love this thing so much. Oh, like, yeah. Dude, what the <laughs> heck? Like, that is yeah. that is awesome. Ah. I wish, man, I wish you were in a little bit of better shape. We could <laughs> yeah. share this share this on yeah. social media. But so I want to I touch on one thing because yeah. um, I don't – we've never really talked about this with anybody. So you have wrapped vehicles yeah. and they look amazing wow. like – they really do. How has that impacted your business in terms of, you know, brand awareness for, because I mean, you're driving all around pretty much the areas that yeah. you want customers. Um, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, the, like you're talking brand awareness with the wraps, the hats, like honestly, you know, I'll get texts, you know, a couple of times a week, you know, oh, you know, I saw your truck down there. That looks really cool. Or, you know, oh, I saw someone wearing your hat here, you know, and like, you're kind of building a community, like, which is, you know, long term, I think very, you know, beneficial. Yeah. When somebody calls, do you, do you always ask them how they heard about you? Because I know that was like part of our, in uh when people would call, that was like what we would ask. But yeah. I remember for a long time, we would forget to ask that. And that is so important because a lot of times people won't tell you, but once you figure out that, 90% of the people are calling because of your vehicles. Yeah. You'll start to understand like it is like a hundred percent a must. Oh yeah. We get a vehicle. It's got to be wrapped. Yeah. Or it's like everybody like hears about us on our Instagram. Well, yeah. we need to start leveraging that and yeah. hire a photographer to do more and oh, yeah. do all these different things. But if you don't ask, they're not going to be like, Hey, exactly. and just, if you were wondering yeah. how I found you, this is how, like yeah. they're not going to do that. And I think the truck thing is, it's a big topic of discussion. When I think of brands, like if I'm going to go get pest control, I, I automatically Green Mango. Those trucks are badass. That, you know, that's probably who I'm going to call. I see them all over. Even if you're not hiring them, people are talking about it. That's a really sweet truck. Kind of like, I guess, plants the seed. When the time comes, they're going to think of you because that truck looked pretty sweet. And the cool thing is I feel like there's different, well, if we're talking about pest control, I think that there's different uh, age demographics yeah. and interests where that's going to, that's going to inspire them to want to call that person. So yeah. someone in maybe in our age demographic is going to be more likely to reach out to them. Cause like, damn, like Matt Black, green, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. and it's kind of, and it's yeah, sort it of dope. minimal, like it's not too crazy. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, it's sexy. It's cool. I yeah. dig it. I'm, I'll call them. Yeah. Um, but then you have the other pest control that's really clean, but it's really got a lot more of their information and their logo and their brand. Yeah. And it's just, uh, you know, more sort of corporate professional. Yeah. That's cool too. That touches a whole other yeah. side, but you have the old crusty magnet on the side of the <laughs> yeah. Datsun uh, with all the bug uh, pesticide stuff, you know, all over the place, you yeah. know, the guy driving it looks like a bug. <laughs> like, a squash it needs bug. to be sprayed. Um, it's completely different. Yeah. So all of that is good. And, oh, you yeah. know, you do a really good job with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I actually feel bad, but I saw a, a, a pool guy not too long ago with the magnet on the side door and he spelled acid wash it A-S-I-D. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, what uh, <laughs> Did you tell him? <laughs> no, he was cleaning the pool. I was just driving by. I, I saw it and I was like, <laughs> What? Oh man, that's bad. A seed wash. Man, I don't know. You might you might acid. ruin his day. You just have this big beautiful <laughs> truck. Hey dude, just want to let you know you spell acid wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I got yeah. it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. Your big beautiful truck. <laughs> um. 
So I know we've been talking a lot about, you know, branding and different things like that, but what's made you kind of be much more progressive and sort of aggressive with making sure that, you know, cause you're, you've even done stuff like you did an automation video with Pentair yeah. and different things like that. Um, you know, what is, uh, the point of all that for you? Uh, I'm just basing it off. I think my own consumer behavior, you know, I'm like a big, like cult follower of these followings like Yeti, you know, Milwaukee, like Pentair, like they do have a very good product and I like stand behind it. And, you know, when they come out with stuff, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to get it. And, you know, so that's, you know, I just, I, I like that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what I've built my, you know, built mine off in like the Pentair thing. I mean, there's anyone that knows me knows, I think they're the best brand. I don't think there's any question. And so, you know, you know, yeah, you've made that kind of clear. Yeah. Like I, you know, <laughs> I want to be the best, you know, that I can be. And so that means, you know, I want to partner up, you know, with the best and do work with them and, uh, establish like authority in the industry, you know? Yeah. And I think for anybody listening to this, you know, go visit Kane's, uh, company Instagram, which is, what is it? Uh, premier pool AZ. Yeah. Go look that up. And um, you'll see what we're talking about because I think you've done a really good job. And this was, there's not too many people that do this. And we did this somewhat at Brothers, but you're doing it at another scale now is being sort of, you know, technical and professional, but doing it in um, a very sexy, cool way um, that's made for the consumer, oh, yeah. uh, for the pool industry. So it's not just a video, it's got, um, there's, jump cuts, there's edits, yeah. there's, um, there's all kinds of different things going on it that will keep your attention there. And I think that's really important, um, as you know, for anybody that's not sure on even how to use some of these social platforms, I would, you know, go to say is trying to use that as sort of a template in terms yeah. of like, oh, this is how you, when you design a brand, this is how to sort of roll it out and implement it and do all those different things. Yeah. And like with the Instagram thing, I've, I've, you know, figured out what works, you know, like when on my feed, it, it really does need to be a nice kick-ass pool. And if it's on, on my story, it needs to be like a tip or trick. Like, it seems like my stories are more towards the pool guys. That's where I'm getting, you know, the response and then the feeds more, you know, the consumer and, you know, you got to kind of find, you know, what works. Cause you know, if you're posting the same picture before and after of a motor, you know, three times a week, you know, it's probably not going to mm, yeah, no. grow you. <laughs> yeah, right. But the thing is, you know, all these, there's a lot of companies that talk about being like a lifestyle brand and it's really difficult for certain companies because there's nothing like for a plumbing company or yeah. a garage door company. Like you have to be really good to make that a lifestyle company oh, because yeah. there's not much lifestyle behind that. Yeah. But for swimming pools, like that is all it is. it is. It is the, what's behind it is we are, we are building pools and taking care of them for a certain person's lifestyle that yeah. um, is doing it for, you know, just fun with their kids or they're using it, um, you know, for exercise. There's uh, all kinds of different things that people are using swimming pools for. Oh, yeah. And there's a whole huge um, lifestyle behind it. And exactly. that's really the best way to kind of, you know, promote your brand oh yeah so let's let's dive a little bit deeper into your business premier yeah. pool care um you know what's what's been the business's focus lately and what do you feel you guys kind of specialize in uh lately it's it's really high-end pools you know i'm not talking you know not a big pool we're kind of you know crazy pools with you know crazy features just crazy stuff getting chem feeders automation just really badass badass pools that's kind of where we found our group lately so what do you, I mean, what do you think you're focusing on specializing in? Um, really right now it seems automation and chem feeders. It just seems like where we're, we're kind of at doing a lot of stuff for, whether it's startups for these builders or, um, just taking on new pools with chem feeders. Cause those are, those are a beast of their own. They're really hard. I, I mean, I know when I was cleaning pools starting out, um, those things were kind of off to the side. They didn't work, you know, you forgot about them and just put, you know, tabs in them. So yeah, we've just been really focusing on getting education on the chem feeders and the automation and just working on that. Where have you been able to 
kind of get that education and learning um, more about that? Like doing the Pantera, you know, in telechem classes. Um, we do a lot. I I have no problem calling, you know, like a service guy from we are we use Hudson from Pantera, and he'll come out diagnose stuff with us, uh, walk us through, you know. I'll be like, hey, can you meet me and my tech at this pool? You know, when we first started getting into the telechems and, you know, hey, can you walk us through this, show us, you know, what's going on. And that's why I really do like Pentair so much because they're willing to take the time to go out in the field and show us, you know, how it works, how it operates, and you know, how to troubleshoot. Um, that's the only really chem feeder I've seen out in the field really is the the Pentair one. So, you know, when if we start to see more, we'll, you know, do the same thing for those brands. Um, sure. Well, I think we talked about we talked about on the last episode with with Scott and Greg um, with A and A, you know about about finding the, the importance of like building relationships with reps. Yeah, and I think that's super important, especially as you go into to higher end pools where you want to learn more things. Like like I think not only Pantera, Pantera does a great job at it, but all of the companies oh, yeah. have these reps that are designed to yeah. to go out there and help you. So whatever you're kind of seeing in your field or your market, yeah. like if reaching out and developing those kind yeah. of relationships. I mean, use them to your advantage. That's what they're there for. Don't be embarrassed. I think that's hard because you're like, you know, you're like, oh, well, I don't really know. Like, but that's what they're there for, you know, and you need to learn somehow. So, you, you know, just take advantage of it. Right. For sure. I mean, most people start off with, you know, I guess you can call them more standard pools with yeah. one pump, one filter. And, you know, as they get more experienced, they'll maybe take on a few te more technical yeah. pools. You seem to kind of take that to like a whole other level, you know, and making that transition from standard to high end pools. What do you think has been maybe some of the biggest challenges in doing that? You know, because you still have some standard ones, right? Yeah. And yeah. Trying to, because um, it can be difficult going from yeah. cleaning a pool that's super easy with one, one pump, one filter, and then your next pool has, you know, yeah. 10 pumps and exactly. all that. So what do you think has been kind of some of those challenges? Really troubleshooting, honestly. Um, when there's an issue, um, you know, it, it may take a couple hours, you know, it may take more than one day, but you know, it, there's a lot of time. I think the other benefit is the pools I'm getting, you know, the way I'm getting these pools is usually from the builders and, you know, they're willing to walk me through it and I get the pool. They, when we go through the whole system, you really got to develop an understanding for it. Like you can't just clean the pool and, you know, you know, it's going to work right. You really need to know the valves, you know, they're working correctly, you know, the chemical feeders dosing X amount of ounces at X amount of ounces per day, um, you know, um, there's definitely a science to it and just, you know, taking the time to really invest in it so you can, you know, do it well. So how, I mean, how do you transition that to your guy in the field then? Like, you know, cause going, yeah. you know, I said earlier, going from a regular pool to those pools, it, yeah. it's kind of a huge difference. Um, how do you, yeah, the other, yeah. Like a lot of training, you know, whether it's Pentair classes, meeting out there with Pentair, you know, A and A or whoever it is, taking the time to invest in his training so like he understands them and really just spending a lot of time, months on end, where we keep going to the same pool, but it's really time and learning. You need to know a lot more about plumbing. That's you know for sure as well, <laughs> you know, because you got these pools, three, four, six, twelve inch plumbing. It's it's pretty gnarly. And I think the other thing too is we were talking about B2B, um, kind of know your place and that kind of thing. Like, and then know if you can't do this, who can you have on your side to help you? Cause the, these kind of pools really aren't like all in house. Like when there's stuff that, you know, happens, whether it's like a Crestron system or, you know, I mean, I can't plumb six inch plumbing, like just having the right guys on my, not on my team, but on my side to help me it really helps. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't do everything and learn everything, and that's that's the importance of building these friendships and relationships within the industry. Yeah, as you guys can help help each other out, and you can help out a lot of companies that may want to take on higher end pools at some point. Yeah, or, and I mean, they I just do different things that they specialize in. I didn't go in knowing anything, you know, about them. You know, it was it was intimidating, um, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's sucking water, it's pushing water out. And it needs to be chemically balanced, you know. And I mean, some of these crazy pools are their problem pools. I think you got to be selective. Is the other thing when when you kind of get into it, because not every cool pool is a good pool either. Yeah, for sure. Well, does your guy clean a standard pool and then go to high yeah. end pool? Like, how did you get him to mentally um, kind of kind of realize that? Because that's a huge difference. I is. think we. 
we always had our guys and we, we didn't take on these yeah. other pools because it was at some point was like, well, you know, they're going to spend 15 minutes at this pool and then you got to spend an hour at this pool and then you got to spend 20 minutes, then an hour and a half. Yeah. Like it was kind of like hard for them to, it, yeah. to, to really, really spend the time needed on those pools. It really does take a special guy. Um, he actually, you know, he's grown to like prefer those kinds of pools. And I think well, the way you bid them, you know, they're making good money, you know, it might be $60 for one pool. So you got to be willing to pay the guy, you know, the right amount and then hopefully be able to charge the customer the right amount. Um, so like I've definitely had to set up the billing or like, uh, yeah, bidding the pool is a lot different. You know, I think this pool is going to take two hours, you know, what's, you know, two hours, you know, four time, four days a week, that's eight hours. Let's divide that. Um, by the standard and then multiply um what the current rate is so like you know if it's eight hours and your normal pool is one hour you know if you're charging 100 bucks and that pool is 800 dollars um which is the other hard thing a lot of these people at the big pools they don't want to pay that <laughs> but um they've gone through so many companies they think they don't have a really a choice at that point because they end up having a lot of long-term issues but uh i think it takes a special guy really I, I think majority of the time those pools are like the owner cleans them. Um, but I kind of got lucky, lucky, you know, with my guy and him willing to do that and just make sure he's taken care of. Yeah. I think there's a lot more liability. I think there's oh, yeah. like zero room for error in those backyards. Cause one, you're not smoking, you're not using foul language, you're not on yeah. your phone. You're not, there's things that you especially those backyards, you oh, do yeah. not do certain things. But I think the other thing that was intimidating to me years ago was seeing, um, you know, pavers and travertine and glass tile and other things that I didn't fully understand. And it made me a little nervous, um, in what was going into the pool and how it might affect, yeah. you know, glass tile, or it might affect, you know, this surface or, oh, yeah. so you're very, it's not, you you can't just do whatever the heck you want. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? No, yeah, you got to be more conscious. You know, like we can't really put chlorine floaters in this pool. These pools are going to burn, you know, the surface or, you know, a lot of them are black pebble tech. You got to really be on your pH um, or, you know, you're they're going to turn white on you or, you know, purple, blue, whatever. Um, but in going back to that, because I don't want to forget, yeah. is – contacting that builder yeah. or even go even after talking with ANA I'd go as far as you know if you know that it's a pebble sheen pebble tech yeah. whatever one of these I would be like okay well I think this is is I don't know if it's necessarily the manufacturer yeah. but contact them and say hey I have this color this is the best photo I can get like what do you think is the best way to really kind of you know treat this pool so that it keeps its color oh, and yeah. they might ask you questions but once you uh, take the time to figure all those things out, you won't need to do that again because yeah. you're going to make note of all that. You'll put it in your, you know, that that customer's account information oh, yeah. so that maybe when the technician gets there, it's like, this is what you need to know. These are the steps that you need to take when taking care of um, this, you know, black colored uh, Pebble yeah. Tech pool or whatever it may yeah. be. What's mm. been the best resource for you when you don't fully understand um, what, like, how to treat that. Yeah. Um, honestly, Jeremy premier paradise, uh, he's been a great resource for us. Um, he's really the, Oh, one. that's weird. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he's the one that <laughs> totally really, kidding. Cause yeah. Jeremy knows, uh, an insane amount. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like he's the one that really gave me the shot at doing, you know, a crazy pool. And like, I'm not afraid to ask questions. You know, if I, you know, I didn't, you know, I knew I could do it, but, you know, I told him like, Hey, I'm going to ask, you know, ask you these kinds of questions and like, but I'm going to get the job done. You know, I'm not going to avoid doing something cause I'm afraid, you're not, you know, afraid to ask you cause I want this thing to work good and I want it to do well. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> Jeremy's been great. Um, even liquid, you know, liquid evolutions. I think the builders have just been a great resource, you know, asking questions. I mean, I don't know if every builder is like that you know, willing to go out in the field with you, walk you through the pool has been a huge benefit for me. Yeah. And Ooh. I think that means so much because I, I remember a time when it was really intimidating to like 
contact the builders. Yeah. You know, you don't want to look stupid and asking these questions. You're not even sure um, if your question's going to get answered. I'm not really sure what really goes through everyone's heads, but it was the coolest thing when, you know, Jeremy was on the podcast and he was like, dude, you see that this is one of my pools in yeah. any way, shape or form, like, oh, dude, yeah. freaking reach out. And exactly. I would love to, you know, help out. And I don't know if there's a lot of people that would do that, but at least why don't you make that decision for yourself? Because if you find out that this is so-and-so's pool and you reach out and yeah. they're not, they're not willing to work with you or help you out very much, yeah. then that's where you make your decision. Don't make it based off of what we tell you or what you say or what she says. Like, why don't you make that decision for yourself? Exactly. Go after them and see what that conversation looks like and see what happens. Yeah. Because we all got, we are always so scared to like reach out to people <laughs> yeah. to like ask things. But now like, I'm just like, damn, like if we could go back be, mm -hmm. yeah. be mm -hmm. calling and texting yeah. every s single person to make this be the best it could yeah. be. And that's what you have to do. You got to ask questions because they're, those pools will turn on you fast and they'll show it fast. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember what some of the, <clears throat> what some of the first questions you asked Jeremy were, or um, even the first pool that you ever took on that was his? Uh, that was the first pool we ran into a lot in our edge, which is an infinity edge, but it spills around the whole pool. So there's no skimmer. The whole pool is basically a big skimmer, uh, chem chemical issue. Uh, on that pool was just pH, high pH. I couldn't figure it out. We were going through 15 gallons of acid a week, you know, which was what, Ooh. 60 gallons <laughs> acid a month on the pool. Wow. I was getting out of control and I didn't know why. So um, I reached out to him. He told me to call uh, with Harold at Arinda. So we talked to him and I learned, you know, about aeration when the air, you know, the air mixes with the water and it's spilling over and the water loss. It doesn't help that there's liquid chlorine either. So, you know, high pH. So we, it was just like a huge issue with pH and I just couldn't get it like under like an 8 So that's when I had reached out to uh, Alex at Poolsmith and then we started messing with the CO2 injection. So like now that pool is on CO2 injection and acid. Now, I mean, all those pools that spill over like that, it, it that's been the biggest issue is pH. Yeah, because you're always going to be losing water. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's already it's always aerating while spilling exactly. over. Exactly. You're just constantly, constantly aerating the yeah. pool. Yeah. Even when we did the, added the CO2, I mean, it's still an ongoing process right now to get it stabilized. Just because it's losing so much water, it's always like stabilizing. We we ended up because it runs twenty four seven, so we ended up having to turn it off for like eight hours, like the spillover part, so the pool just runs, so it's not losing. Because like with CO2, you're building up carbonic acid in the in the water. So when it's spilling over and losing the water, you can't get it to build that and stay in the water. But yeah, yeah, that was a huge issue. And on those chem feeders, I only charge for liquid chlorine. I don't charge for acid because the majority of them don't go through that much acid. And I was going through like <laughs> ninety dollars a week in acid on this pool. It was, it was, it nice. wasn't good for the bank. You still have that pool? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's most people I've seen it on Instagram and that I've seen it in person. That it's it's probably one of the sickest pools. I've ever. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool one. So I mean, people don't really get handed those type of high end accounts. No. And you said Jeremy gave you a shot. You know, how did since then? How have you kind of gotten the radar with these yeah. builders? And what did you do to kind of help yourself get qualified to take care of these kind of pools? It actually started not even with Jeremy. Um, Started through Instagram. Uh, I met on demand design concepts on there, which his name is John Martinez. John, yeah. And we just started talking on Instagram, and he was de he designs and stuff, and he's the one that introduced me to Jeremy. And honestly, once I met Jeremy, like it just snowballed. Like he just gave me all these pools. We started doing them, and then other builders started reaching reaching out, and they're like, you know, this has been a huge issue for us. Is finding quality service and so it just kind of went from there we started to establish authority and did you feel you were ready for that that fast no it was it was scary you know <laughs> i went from not knowing anything about computers to having like 20 of them and it it was uh scary <laughs> how did you adjust for that did you go to training i mean yeah so we did well we started just having like hudson from pentair he just was coming out frequently to jobs and walking me through the systems and you know, I'll, I still to this day call him all the time and ask him, you know, how to work this. The, the Intellicams have been a huge learning curve, huge. They take a lot of maintenance, a lot of, a lot of, yeah, work. Um, I think they require a lot more than I think 
some builders might realize. Exactly. Um, and that's, I think the service end, we realize a lot more of that because, you know, at, at a building stage, you might see it brand new, Yeah. but on the service side, like we just see that the sun is just beating the crap out oh, of the yeah. stuff all day long. And it's just, uh, it's a little bit different. Yeah. The hard thing too is relaying to customers because, you know, they have the automation, so it's on the screen logic or what that. It's not a perfect system. It works in, within a range. It stays in a range. So I had a guy, you know, his, he always wanted his pH at 7.4. And if it went over, you know, it's kind of like hell on earth. <laughs> and like, it's it's technology. Yeah. Like the difference is the, the Wi-Fi guy doesn't come to your house weekly. Because yeah. if he did, yeah. he'd be chewing his ass out every single week. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, then telecoms, you got to set them up like cartridge filters every six months. You're replacing the hoses, the check valves, the tube inside, you know, the motor. Um, and yeah, understanding the settings on them. Like, you know, if you're, you're going there every week and the, the ORP is really low, you know, you need to look at your settings. You know, I need to dose this X amount more and I need to, you know, raise my daily limit. So you know, it maintained itself and uh, actually the other issue has been these tanks are too small. Like on the Intel comes are four gallons, you know, on the 20,000 gallon pool, I ain't doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, just kind of relaying to customers that not that it's a problem, but you know, it takes a lot of work and just, you know, work with us or work with you and you know, the, the pool's going to do a good job, but it, you know, it works within a range and there's kind of, there's kind of be going to be, you know, problems that happen, but we'll take care of it. Yeah. Cause I think it's, especially somebody that wants a very large pool. Yeah. The chemical feeder is, is an amazing thing because it's, you know, giving the pool what it needs yeah. on a regular basis, you know, especially a, a really large pool is probably running close to 24 hours a day. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, just <laughs> if you're manually, putting in liquid chlorine or tabs or things like yeah. that, uh, that would be an insane amount, like yeah. just going to the pool every two seconds yeah. and this way. So I totally understand that part of it. And I think that is a, a really good talking point with a customer where it's like, you wanted the, you know, yeah. 30, 40, 50,000 gallon pool, yeah. pool, you know, and, uh, we fill this tank up and it, you know, distributes the chemicals yeah, as needed. Exactly. I mean, don't get me wrong. She put, you know, three tab floaters in the pools. They're going to cost you less money and work great. But like how much, how expensive the materials and how they react to the chemicals is completely different. And like, it's not worth the. Plus if they're paying 400,000, 500,000 for a pool, yeah. like they don't want to look at three floaters. Exactly. That <laughs> is crazy. Cause when you're, when you're making the transition, a floater is a normal thing and you're like, like, hey, we could just put a floater in here, like, just because, you know, we're running out of chlorine halfway through the week, you know. If we put a floater in here, you know, we'll help maintain it. Like, oh, my wife doesn't like the way that looks. So you're just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a totally different, yeah. Ball Gets game. to the point, it's just they're on your belt loop. Yeah. <laughs> well, you need a floater? You can go one right here. Got a, yeah. Go one right here. Brand That's new. been the other struggle is kind of learning what type of customers these are. They're not normal customers and that that's other than adjusting pricing because you kind of got to be on the dime with these pools. You, when they shut down for a long time, you're running into some huge issues. So like you kind of play that into when you bid the account, even though, you know, one of this, this pool is 15,000 gallons with a little spa. Like if say it's $120 at, you know, in a different area, I'm going to bid it like 180 here because there's, there's a lot more attention to detail and there's, they expect kind of perfection. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially is, with these glass tile pools yeah. that they're just, I mean, I always say glass tile because it's, it's not cheap. This stuff no. is, and if a customer has it, they know what they paid for it. Oh, yeah. Like mm -hmm. they know that that is definitely like uh, a premium oh, um, yeah. for them to have that in their pool and for you to be out there, you know, with, you know, everything is under the microscope. Oh, you're looking is. at water clarity. You're looking at surface tile. Yeah. You're making sure that, you know, you've caught everything and then that's just the pool. That's not even talking about all the equipment oh, yeah. that you're just going through every little thing. Cause you're not, it's not a intermatic time clock yeah. and a single speed pump and a filter. No. That's been a huge issue too, is especially in Arizona is the, the calcium line on these pools. They, you know, I get it. They spend a lot of money, but like, you know, they point out, well, you're not brushing, you know, but so that's why we got to 
Um, the pH has been such an issue, like, because it just really, it, it latches on a lot easier. Using sequestering agents and other yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. So I've been testing a lot of different chemicals out that I've never tried before. Oh, you're, been... you're not just out there with a pumice stone hitting, no. hitting that glass tile? No. And it's crazy. <laughs> you know, these people are, you know, they'll blast their tile every six months. They don't really, you know, they just want the pool to look good. Yeah. Some do. That's insane. Um, when you're pricing these kind of pools, though, like you said, you would charge more, but like the chem- with the chemical feeders, how has that affected your bidding? Uh, so, yeah, this is the first time I really had to charge for chemicals. Um, you know, we uh, we don't charge for acid, but, you know, for liquid, you know, it's X amount per gallon and, you know, however many gallons you use a month, you're paying for that. Um, and then for like the summer chemicals, it's, it's I, I raise it a little bit higher because they do take more algicides and shocks because they just there's not chlorine in the pool and when these things run out you know you run it's not like stabilized chlorine sitting yeah in there all so time. a lot yeah. of times the cyanuric acids are, you know sometimes lower than you want and so sometimes when they do go it, they take a lot of work to get back so like in the summer chemical thing they get charged a little bit more um I think that's fair. I don't yeah. think you need to be shy about it. Like no. that's, <laughs> no. they have to, they have to know and understand yeah. what their, what, what their, yeah. their Disneyland pool exactly. takes. You know? And I mean, don't get me wrong. At first I was like, I, you know, I kind of rather do the smaller stuff, but you know, these, a lot of these people that are building these are willing to, you know, pay to get good stuff. And it's kind of nice. It's been like a challenge, you know, like, cause like you're talking about, it gets redundant, you know, cleaning, the same pool every you know every tuesday at 10 o'clock and you know in and out like it's it's been cool to learn about these pools i mean it's definitely appealing to the eye and it, it's been kind of just a new learning experience and kind of change it up i think if i were cleaning pools all by myself and i didn't have a business partner nothing else i would wear a wetsuit every single day <laughs> yeah. and i would get in every single pool oh, yeah. and i would just like get in clean it with like hand skim it yeah do the whole thing um Cause I'm always tripping out about that. I'm like, why are we of all people? Yeah. Like, why are we the hottest ones? Exactly. Yeah. Like, why are we not in the pools? <laughs> like, that's in my my bid and my service agreement. Oh yeah. I can get in the pool. I'm gonna clean it. Gonna have like a little wetsuit on, but I'm getting wet. <laughs> yeah. Is that cool? <laughs> we actually now that we had to buy special shoes for these pools because most of them we have to get in and clean them. So we you know. Oh like, yeah, oh, yeah. We got these special like water shoes like, you walk uh, in the pool. It's or... probably some walls that you can't yeah even reach. Yeah, that's yeah. You got to get some big poles <laughs> on some of these pools. Uh, um, we have one too. Well, we used to, but you know, at one side of the main edge wall was all glass. Hmm. You know, there was no concrete, shotcrete. You know, none of that. It was just a glass through glass panels. Wow. Yeah, that's... and that that was the, actually the seven four ph issue pool <laughs> uh, makes yeah. sense that's rad well you are you're talking about clientele that's actually one of one of our questions here you know with us being in scottstone pv and stuff um you know what what adjustments have you made trying to do with those, those um, type of people their expectations are high but they're paying a premium and you kind of need to tango with them like you know it's not like these smaller, you know, it's not a good pool. I don't need to do that. Like, you know, they're willing, they're paying this a dollar amount and you got to kind of like work with them a lot, a lot more than the normal customer. Yeah. Um, I think we noticed that even, even not so much on the, even on the high end pools, just in Scottsdale in general. And these like, you know, I think R- Rich Gallows talked to us about it too. Like those like beach kind of customers that have that high dollar amount money. Like yeah. you just have to treat them differently a little bit oh, yeah. but if you when you learn how to interact with them and i learned a lot at trivita how to like when i was working with millionaires a lot like trying to you know email back and forth with them it's just a, the, the lingo you use is different and oh, the, yeah. the words you use are different and it's just it is. they just want things taken care of they want taken care of now yeah they don't really they care how much it costs but if you've built that relationship with them, then they just want it fixed. Yeah. Like it's also, yeah. so much different. There's a happy medium too, because they'll, they're more than willing to walk all over you. So you got to yes. sometimes stand firm and be like, Hey, this it's 4th of July. I'm not coming out. I'll be there in the next day in the morning. And you know, they don't want to accept, they don't like taking no, but sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you know, stand your ground. That's part of the same thing you were talking about earlier, establishing those boundaries in the very beginning too. Yeah. You know, you just gotta, I'm going to take care of you. We do good work on these pools. We take care of these kind of pools, but yeah. we don't work on 4th of July. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, that was, uh, 
and I brought that up because that was something that happened this last one. You know, we were like, hey, if you don't come to here, you're done. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, call somebody else. Yeah, it's all right, you know. If it doesn't work, <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. So if somebody were wanting to make that transition from, you know, their standard, you know, residential swimming pool to, you know, say a, a high-end pool, you know, what, you know, how do you suggest they go about that? Education. Uh, I think take the time, you know, whether it's Jandy, Hayward, Pentair, take their classes. I know like Pentair has like one where you can take all the classes for all the automation and then you're, you know, like, I don't know if it's called their master program or what it's called. Um, and I think get as many reps information as you can and start having them come out to your other pools that you have problems with, you know, build the relationship, ask them questions. Um, and like other, you know, reach out to builders if you have questions and, you know, like maybe you have some kind of high end pool and you run into issue, like, you know, be willing to ask questions and not be embarrassed. And then, you know, just see what happens. Cause it really, for, for me, you know, I didn't ever think I was going to get that kind of pool. And then, so, you know, I don't know if there's like a, a method to be getting them, but you know, I just educate yourself, ask the questions and, you know, kind of roll with the punches, you know, don't be scared to ask the questions because when you avoid, avoid that, it, the pool shows on those ones. It's not like a pool, you know, with a high sunuric acid and you can kind of run with it and, you know, you just keep adding more tabs and, you know, you'll drain it in the winter and then you're, it, it doesn't work like that on those kind of pools. Right. And I think that just helps, you know, you sell yourself to yeah. maybe a higher end builder because maybe now you know more about, you know, automated feeders yeah. and just kind of, I mean, it's a residential pool, but it's almost like on a commercial exactly. scale. Um, but if you've gone through, um, some of the different education programs that these manufacturers put on and you've gone through this and you do understand it and you've kind of been in and out of the textbooks and, Maybe watching. I think there's a lot of things uh, in these Facebook groups that you can that you can learn and take note of. Yeah. I mean, I think there's even a bar in there that you can just put in a key word, and it'll just kind of give you everything um, that has to do with that specific topic. Yeah. But I think if you kind of do all those things, you're checking all those boxes off, and you go to, you know, uh, one of these higher end builders, that will make it so much easier for them to want to work with you. Yeah. Because maybe it's something you really want to do and it's like they're already using somebody. Like you never know when you – it's like, hey, I can't take yeah. on another one or I can't do it in that area. You never know when it's oh, – it yeah. might be your time to shine. Yeah. I think the opportunity definitely will come. I wouldn't be afraid to put yourself out there because, I mean, it's been a common consensus that these a lot of these builders have a big issue on the service side of finding guys that are willing to do it. Um so yeah, I don't yeah, don't let your ego get in the way, you know, and don't act like you you know when you don't cuz it will bite you in the ass. Oh, for sure. I'm sure nothing would make some of these builders happier than to put you in your place. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but I mean the, oh, the builders really? should in a way too be willing to to help you. I mean, yeah. not necessarily everybody's going to be, but they should be open to that because, you know, with, like with Jeremy and and even Liquid we talk with like They'd rather you take care of that pool properly because oh, yeah. even if, if you mess it up, they still got to be involved with all those litigations and all this stuff. If yeah. it happens because they built the pool, like they don't want to be involved in that anyway. So, yeah. you yeah. know, you should, most builders should want to, to help oh, yeah. you at least learn how to take care of that specific yeah. pool. And when you but, start to get educated in these kind of pools, when you go like say one where the equipment's not hydraulically sound and, you know, there's issues when you have, you know, you built up this kind of reputation and you're building, you know, the education stuff, you can sell this customer how to make this pool work better because they know it's an issue. They know they have these problems and, you know, that's a, a lot of those pools are big ticket repairs. So, you know, as a long term, you know, it's going to benefit you. Big time. Sure. Well, I just want to ask kind of one more question. Last question is we like to ask is really, you know, if you could recommend one book or one podcast that's either had a really big impact on you or that you just really enjoy. And you know, what do you think that would be? Book wise, uh, "Can't Hurt Me" by David Goggins. I actually just finished that one like last month. But lately, I've just been so focused on like mental health and setting yourself up to be working correctly and just learning what works for you and what doesn't, and kind of like the customers making your body work for you and not against you. 
you know, and just getting in the right mindset. And then podcast wise, I really like Ed Milet podcast, you know, he's a very well accomplished entrepreneur and he just, you know, helps you put the right tactics into play and the right mindsets as well. And just kind of roll with the punches and do better for yourself. Nice. For sure. If people want to reach out to you and you, you to, to get some help on anything or want to find your pages and stuff, what, what are the, what's uh, your website? What's your Instagram? Yeah, pretty much everything's uh, at premier pool AZ or, you know, premier pool AZ.com and, you know, I'm all about, you know, working with other guys. You know, if you got questions about hiring pools, ask me, you know, if I can help you, I will, or give you the resources too. You know, I'm, I love, you know, working with other guys in the industry and, you know, helping them out. Well, we, we appreciate you coming on here, man, and being yeah. here with us. We've enjoyed our friendship over the years with you, oh, yeah, and it's no. cool to get you on. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me out. Yeah, it was exciting when you guys asked. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for checking out this episode. If you want to find out more about our guests or the sponsors of the show, you can check them out on the links we have provided in the write-up below. We have also provided links to our social media platforms, so please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our tag is Pool Chasers. If the podcast has brought you any value, please do what you can to support us through our Patreon page by going to patreon.com forward slash pool chasers. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to be updated each time a new episode is released. One last thing. If you're not yet in our Facebook group, join it today to be surrounded by like-minded individuals who are all trying to better the industry. Thank you all for the support. We appreciate your time and your ear. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.